Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys a simple example to help you understand how to background and foreground a process in Linux. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here I am on my laptop. I'm actually connected to an Ubuntu server via SSH. This is actually a VM. It's a virtual machine that I set up for the purposes of recording a Samba tutorial that has already been uploaded to my channel. So if you want to go ahead and learn some basics of Samba, check out that video where I show you how to create a simple Samba file share. But the process doesn't actually change regardless of which distribution you are using because the concept of background and foreground is the same on all distros. So I'm going to go ahead and use a text editor as an example in this video. Now normally I would use Nano as an example because it's one of the easier text editors available. But there's an interesting problem with Nano where some distros actually disable its ability to be backgrounded and I can't understand for the life of me why anyone would do that because backgrounding is a very, very useful thing to do, which you'll see very shortly. But that's why I'm not going to use Nano as an example in this video. It does work fine on Debian and Ubuntu, but other distros, like I mentioned, they do disable that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use Vim as the example. Now you do have to have it installed, and it is not installed by default on a lot of distros. So if you are like me and you are running Ubuntu, or if you're running Debian, or even something based on Ubuntu or Debian, you can simply run sudo apt install vim hyphen nox, just like that. There are multiple vim packages available. This one is my favorite because it has extended support for some scripting languages. So that's why it's my preferred. And I'm not going to install it because I already did. Now if you're running a Red Hat based distribution such as CentOS, Fedora, and so on, you would actually run sudo dnf install vim hyphen enhanced, just like that to get my favorite Vim package for that platform. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to open up Vim, and now we have an empty Vim window on the screen. If you don't already know how to use Vim, don't worry about it. We're not actually going to go too deep into Vim in this video, but if you do want to learn Vim, I do have a tutorial series already on my channel that you should go ahead and check out. Anyway, I will press I to go into insert mode, because in Vim, you have to be in insert mode in order to type anything. And then I'm simply going to type a sentence just like that. And at this point, we can go ahead and background Vim. But before we do, we need to get out of insert mode because insert mode is actually capturing all of our keyboard input. So I'll press escape. And you can see at the bottom left corner of the screen, insert went away. And to actually background Vim, I can hold control and press Z just like that and Vim went away. What might be a bit confusing is that it says stopped right here. Now I assure you Vim is still present. If we type FG, short for foreground, and press enter, Vim comes back just as we left it. And again, Control Z will send it to the background. And the reason why that's extremely useful is because maybe you are working in a text editor, maybe you're writing code, you're working on a config file or something like that, and someone comes by, taps you on the shoulder, interrupts you, and asks you to work on something else. Now what you could do is just open up another terminal window and then open another SSH session to that server. And then you have another window to do whatever it is they needed help with. And then when you're done, you can close that window and return back to the original one, the one where you had Vim opened in. Now while that is perfectly valid, it's a little inefficient because you don't really need another terminal window to go ahead and just simply work on something else. You can background the process, send it to the background, do whatever it is you need to do, and then use FG, again, short for foreground, to bring it back. Now, it doesn't really matter which application you use when it comes to backgrounding and foregrounding, because again, that's universal across all the different apps that you could be running in your terminal session. And one exception, like I mentioned, is Nano. You can't background that on some distros, I don't know why but that's very rare that you are unable to background a process in Linux. So a non-text editor example is, you know, HTOP. HTOP is actually my favorite utility for monitoring system resources. 
And it's not installed by default, but I'm going to use it as the second example because it's just so cool. But if you don't already have it installed on a Debian or Ubuntu system, you just run sudo apt install htop just like that. And if you are on a Red Hat based system, then the command will look something like this. But you might need to add a different repository to have access to that. But it, again, it doesn't matter. Whatever application you want, whatever you have installed is good. You don't have to use the same examples as I am, but I'll just type htop and press enter and there it is and just like the text editor example I can hold control and press Z to go ahead and background that now anytime I want to go ahead and check on the performance of my server my laptop desktop whatever it is I can just type FG to bring htop back onto the terminal window we'll get back to the video shortly but first I want to mention my sponsor Linode Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. And Linode is giving Learn Linux TV subscribers $100 in credit when you sign up today. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and of course Arch. And multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode also features 24 by 7 by 365 support that's available by phone or support ticket regardless of your plan size. And the pricing is simple with monthly caps that ensure no hidden fees and generous monthly transfer that's built in which means no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. So go ahead and check out Linode. They are actually my infrastructure provider. I love their service. So go ahead and sign up with the link in the description below to get your $100 in Linux server credits. And now, let's get back to the video. Now, you might be wondering, how do you see what all tasks you've backgrounded? Can you get a list? Well, you sure can. You can basically type jobs just like that and press enter. And you can see here that I actually have two jobs running in the background. Now, when I type FG and press enter, HTOP comes back. But why was it HTOP? We can see that I have Vim in the background as well. So how can I actually choose which one I want to foreground? Well, what you can actually do is type FG and then the job number. So I could type one, for example, to bring Vim back. And here it is. So that's how you could basically choose which of these you want to bring back. So if you don't actually use a job number, it's going to bring back whatever task you have most recently sent to the background. So again, for example, I could just use Vim. Maybe I'll edit a file called testfile.txt. Doesn't actually exist. But you know, I have another text editor window here. And again, control Z, send it to the background. And now I have three jobs running in the background. And for example, I can bring back the very first Vim window by FG and then give it one as an argument. And I have the very first window here on my screen. Now, if I go ahead and quit out of this window right here without saving changes, it's just colon Q exclamation mark and press enter. And then enter the jobs command again. We have the two other jobs still running in the background and we have a job number next to each just like before, but notice that it didn't change. These job numbers don't shuffle around. Now, the one that I just closed out was job ID of one and we still have job ID two and three. So those don't change if you close an earlier job number, the later ones don't actually change as you can see right here. Now if you try to log out when you have things backgrounded, so for example control D, it actually prevented my logout and told me there are stopped jobs. It's just a fail safe here just to say hey you probably don't want to do that, you have stuff running in the background. Now if I hold control and press D again, it will log me out regardless and those jobs will be gone. Now one thing you might be curious about is if there's a way to send a job to the background and not show it on the screen. And there is. So for example, I'll use Vim again. So Vim, I'll just say test file 2 for example, space, and at the end of the command, ampersand, just like that. I'll press enter. And notice how the Vim window did not appear. Now, it is running. We can see here it has a job ID of 4 and we see it down here, but it never actually showed up on the screen. But just like any other job that has been backgrounded, I can use FG and then the job number, in this case four, 
And there's the window. It's just a blank text file, but you can see that it's test file two at the bottom. That's the name of the file that we're editing. So I was able to bring that up. And that's how you could basically send something to the background without actually having to hold control and press Z. You can actually start it in the background, which is pretty cool. Now when you background a process, you'll notice right here, it gives you the process ID or PID, also referred to as a PID. And every Linux process has a process ID and they have to be unique. Now a full tutorial on process management is beyond the scope of this video, but it is important to know that every task has its own PID. And we can always check up on that, make sure that it's still running in the background, you know, it didn't die or anything like that. I mean, yeah, the jobs command does work for that, but we can also run PS, AUX, and then in my case, I will just pipe that to grep, then I will grep for that process ID of 1589 and press enter. And here it is. It shows the job and some data about that job right here. And then I can just go ahead and bring it back I can quit out. And I can clean up my process list by bringing everything back here. And maybe I'm just closing out for the day, but one by one, I could just bring them back. And if I only have one running, I don't need to give it a job ID. I could, but it's not necessary. FG by itself is fine. And there it is. And I really think that this is a great example because if you think about it, some people, you know, they'll just open up a bunch of terminal sessions to the same terminal. And backgrounding and foregrounding is a great way to be more efficient on the command line. So I hope that was helpful for you. And speaking of efficiency, definitely check out my Tmux tutorial series because that'll take your terminal efficiency to the next level. Tmux is awesome. It even allows you to multitask on the terminal even better than this. So definitely check that out. But for the purposes of our video here, it's simply control Z, send it to the background, and then FG to bring it back. I showed you the jobs command and then also how to foreground specific jobs as well. So you should be good to go. So there you go. I've always thought that the easiest way to learn background and foreground in Linux is to use a text editor because it's just an awesome example of that. And you also saw HTOP as well, which is another example that I like. I hope that was helpful for you guys. And if you like this video, please click that like button to let YouTube know how awesome this was. And definitely subscribe because I have some awesome content coming very soon. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.